Hi everybody, I'm Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed. I have been flipping furniture for almost 10 years now and I wanna inspire you with 10 amazing flips for 2024 and they start right now. Furniture makeover number one is the faux wood finish. This really took the DIY world by storm last year. I'm starting off by cleaning the dresser and making some repairs with Bondo. This finish is a great way to get that modern pottery barn finish without having to strip down your dresser and stain it. Once my repairs were dry, I used my sander to smooth everything down smooth and I gave it a scuff sand to help my paint adhere. To get this faux wood finish, you wanna start off with a base of a beige colored paint. I'm using silk all-in-one paint in the color Sandcastle. I'm gonna be applying my first coat with my sprayer because it goes really, really fast and gives a smooth finish. I have full tutorials on all the makeovers that I'm sharing with you today, so check out the description box if you want any more information on any of the makeovers I'm sharing. This paint I'm using has a built-in primer as well as a top coat, so it's a one-step paint that's gonna give me a really hard, durable finish. If you don't have a sprayer, you could definitely roll on or brush on this first coat, but as you will see in many of my furniture makeovers today, my sprayer has become my best friend. I'm going to be using it a lot today in the makeovers that I'm sharing with you, and I used to be totally terrified of spraying, but now I reach for this thing over and over again, so if I can learn how to spray, I really think anybody can. When my drawers line up flush with my frame like this, I find it a lot easier to keep the drawers in. And then once the paint dries, you can pull the drawers out and use a small brush to get into the details in the drawers. I let this base coat dry overnight and now I'm ready to add my brown glaze. This is gonna give me that faux wood finish. I have a couple of synthetic brushes here, a big natural bristle brush, and then this broom that is going to give me lots of texture. I work in small sections and use the synthetic brush to put the glaze all over the top of my drawer front. Then I'm using that big natural bristle brush to smooth everything out. And then I'm gonna grab that blue wiry broom brush and this is going to make strokes across here that are gonna look like wood grain. I repeated this process on the entire dresser using those long strokes when I'm using that natural bristle brush as well as that broom brush. I let the glaze dry overnight and then the next day I used a flat top coat to protect everything and seal in my finish. I'm using that same synthetic brush that I used to apply the glaze to put on this top coat. You can find all the products I'm using for each makeover down in the description box. Once my top coat was dry, I added on the original hardware because I think when it comes to a French provincial dresser like this, you have to keep this hardware. It's the only thing that's gonna make sense. The H patina on here was really perfect for this finish, so I just applied them without cleaning or doing anything to them. Just to remind you, here is the dresser we started off with before, and this is what it looked like with that faux wood finish. For my first time attempting this finish, I really loved the way that this turned out. If you didn't know, I no longer sell my furniture flips, so this got donated to a friend who has a preteen that was looking to upgrade her room a little bit, so she's really enjoying this. Makeover number two involves a arch and a Roman clay look. I got this beat up cabinet for free from somebody that I work out with. I never can turn down free furniture and I wanted to completely transform the way this looked. Those doors were beyond repair so I decided to rip those off and cleaned the entire cabinet and sanded it down so I could add some paint. I was inspired by the Roman clay that is very popular with textured walls right now in home design. So I decided to use this clay-based paint and use a really textured look with a natural bristle brush to get lots of texture. I chose this really natural tan color to give it a look almost like stone. This paint takes a long time to dry and I put it on really thick. So I had to let this dry overnight before I could add my second coat. While it was drying, I went to work on adding an arch. I took a piece of plywood that I had and marked off how big I wanted the arch and used a string and a fixed point to draw the arch. Once I had my arch marked out where I wanted it, I used my jigsaw to cut it out of the plywood. I used a smooth blade, but my cut was still pretty jagged, so I took an orbital sander and smoothed everything out so it didn't have any splinters or chips in it. I used some brad nails to attach it to the frame of the cabinet. And then to give it a seamless look, I used some silicone paintable caulk to fill in all the gaps. Once I had the arch in place and everything was dry, I was ready to start my second coat of paint. Again, I let this dry overnight and then I came in with a clear top coat to protect the finish. 
I did three coats of this top coat in total. It took a long time in between coats because this paint really reconstitutes when it gets wet like this. So this was a long process, but it'll be worth it to protect it. Once it was completely dry, I added my new brushed brass hardware. I love digging this unusable cabinet and making a whole new creation out of it. I think it turned out super sophisticated. This one I gave as a wedding gift to a sweet couple in my church that got married this year and moved into a new home. Furniture makeover number three, I used the color of the year and pole wrap to transform this dresser. This is one of my most popular makeovers that I made over with Beyond Paint several years ago. I'm scuff sanding this off to add some primer to it. This lived in my son's room for quite a while, but I redid another dresser for him a few years ago and this has been sitting in my storage unit and I decided this was the year that it needed another makeover. I've always wanted to use pole wrap on a furniture makeover and this year I found some in stock. So I'm just measuring my drawer fronts and I'm gonna cut this pole wrap down to size and give the drawers a fluted look. Pole wrap is flexible MDF with an oak veneer on it, so it's really easy to form it to furniture. You can curve it and wrap it around things, but this I'm just laying flat on my drawers. Pole wrap is expensive, but it is a lot easier than individually fluting each drawer with wood dowels. To attach this to the drawers, I use some wood glue and some brad nails. I've done this technique again recently and I find that the brad nails are not necessary and that you just wanna put some weights on top like tiles or boards and books and weights. Also to get a straight cut with your miter saw, you wanna wrap the pole wrap really tightly. I didn't have mine wrapped super tightly on these cuts and it was really wavy and I had to sand down the edges. This is not ideal, so you wanna try to cut it correctly first so you don't have to do all this sand correcting like I did here. Once I got all the pole wrap attached, I was ready to paint the dresser. I'm starting off by using a gray primer because the color I'm using is gonna be pink. And when you have pink or reds or dark colors, a gray primer is really gonna help you with coverage. As you can see, I'm using my sprayer again to get this primer on fast and give me a smooth finish. The color I chose for this dresser is Red and Point by Sherwin-Williams. It was their color of the year last year and it's a beautiful mauve pink. This color was very polarizing on Instagram and TikTok. You either loved it or you hated it. It's very 90s, so I was a fan. And here's a couple tips for you if you're spraying. Tip number one, you wanna be about six to eight inches away from your dresser. And tip number two, you wanna overlap your strokes by about 30 or 50%. I have lots of videos on how to use sprayers, so search my channel up if you're wanting more detail about that. This was my first time spraying a trim and cabinet paint. I really liked the way that it went on. And the best part is, is that it doesn't need a top coat. And I actually got really good coverage with just one coat. So after everything was dry, I added my new finger pulls and this makeover was complete. I actually ordered some different pulls than you see me installing here that stuck out a little bit further to make it easier to open the drawers. And just to remind you, this is what this dresser started off with and this is what it looked like after I added the pull wrap and the Sherwin-Williams color of the year, Red End Point. I donated this to a local thrift store that serves people in need in my community, so I hope the proceeds from this dresser helped a lot of people. Furniture flip number four is going to get a makeover with milk paint and wax. I found this cute little chest of drawers at my local Habitat for Humanity for $45, which is a really good deal for my area. I wasn't quite sure what this was painted with and it looked really old. So I did a lead test on it and everything was okay. It was just latex paint. So I decided we need to strip this down and see what beauty lies underneath. Stripping is a long process, but actually when somebody uses latex paint, it's pretty easy to get off. Most chemical strippers can take this off really well. It's just a gooey, sticky mess, and it took me a long time to strip this down, but it was definitely worth it. The hardest part was definitely getting all the paint off of the details on this feet. It took a lot of multiple layers of stripper and a lot of scrubbing with these little brass brushes, but I finally got it clean enough to get to sanding. I did a lot of sanding to get the wood on the drawers and the feet and the top in a good shape because I want to keep them natural, so I needed to sand to get them looking good. 
While the drawers and the top were a really beautiful wood, the wood on the frame was very cheap and once I got the varnish off, I could tell it was not going to match the top and the feet and the drawers. So I mixed up some milk paint to paint the frame. I love milk paint because it is a natural paint and it comes in a powder and you mix it up and then it's ready to go on like this. I used this beautiful earth green color and it really made the frame look nice. Once I got all the paint on the frame, I decided to paint the top true drawers too because they weren't as decorative as those other drawers that I had stripped down and I just thought this was gonna look better. Now to make this beautiful wood shine that was on the drawers and the feet and the top I'm using a brown wax to really bring this to life and add some depth to it. This wax is also going to protect the finish. Just look at this difference here. It looks so beautiful and rich. Once I was done adding that dark wax I'm just taking a clean cloth and wiping back any excess. Now I'm going to seal the sides with a clear soft wax to give it a beautiful finish and give it protection just like the drawers. Milk paint is very absorbent so the wax goes on really smoothly and it really deepens the color and gives it a beautiful look. Just like with the brown wax, once I got this on the entire painted portion, I wiped back any excess with a clean cloth. Once I was done with the frame, I taped it off to protect it and added that same brown wax to the top and the feet to give them the same look as the drawers. To clean up the hardware, I boiled it in some vinegar and then buffed it up with some fine steel wool. This is such an easy trick and just look at the difference that it makes. Once I was done cleaning the hardware, I put all the drawers back in and added the hardware. And just to remind you, here is what I started off with and I flipped it into this. It was a pretty dramatic makeover. This one was very popular on Instagram with over 5 million views on the reel I created on this dresser. This one got donated to that thrift store that I mentioned that serves families in need in my community. So I hope its sales brought some food and much needed clothes and housing support to those who need it. Furniture makeover number five is this deep sea sideboard. It doesn't look deep sea right now, but I'm going to paint this a very deep navy. This sideboard belongs to some of my dear friends and it had been in their garage for several years and we decided to take it out of there and give it new life so they can put it back in their home. And this thing had a ton of water damage, so I had to do lots of repairs on the base with Bondo and rip off that back. Once that Bondo was dry, I just sanded it down smooth. This took a lot of sanding because there were lots of repairs to do. I also scuff sanded the entire body to prepare it for paint. This sideboard also had a lot of additional damage in the fact that it was missing a piece of hardware and it was also missing a piece of trim on one of the doors. So I'm using this mold putty to mix this together to form some molds so I can replace the missing items. I'm using one of the pieces of hardware to make a mold so I can replace the missing hardware and then I'm also putting it on this piece of trim so I can replace a piece of trim on the opposite door. Once I made my molds, I'm just using a quick setting epoxy that is in two parts, mixing that together and putting it in my molds and it will be set in 10 minutes so that I can replace my items that are missing. Once the epoxy was set, I pulled it out of the mold and trimmed off the excess and then all I had to do was trim it down to size for the drawer, add some adhesive to the back and apply it to the door. For the missing hardware, I did the same thing. I just pulled my epoxy out of my mold, trimmed the excess, and then I added some gold gilding wax to get it to match the other hardware. Now that my repairs are made, I'm ready to add some gray primer. I'm using a gray primer because I'm using a deep navy color and that's gonna give me good coverage. Why I decided to prime the sideboard is because I have a lot of exposed wood and I have a lot of repairs with the Bondo and the trim and adding that primer is just going to give me a better base when I add this deep blue paint. My last step in fixing up this sideboard was adding some gold gilding wax to the existing hardware to really make it pop. And since I sprayed with my drawers in, I'm using this little brush to touch up the inside of the drawers. I used an all-in-one paint with a top coat built in, so I'm ready to attach my hardware and finish this project off. My last step was adding some new backing that I got cut at the hardware store. This sideboard was in really rough shape and sat rotting in my friend's garage for a couple of years, but we have given it a new life, adding new hardware and new trim. That was a new technique for me. I just love the way that this turned out and they loved it too. 
Makeover number six is gonna be an anthropology inspired makeover. I grabbed the bottom of this high boy for 45 bucks. I think it's missing the top, but I decided to bring it home and get to work on it. I cleaned it, used the carbide scraper to get the top finish off and then used a sander to get the remaining finish off. I also filled the existing hardware holes and then drilled new holes for this simple pool. As I mentioned, this is gonna be anthropology inspired. I'm making a version of of their enchantment dresser that is so popular. I've done this before, but this time I'm gonna whitewash this entire thing and add some would you bend flowers to it. So to make a wash, I'm just doing two parts paint, one part water. You can use any white paint to get this look. I like using a chalk style furniture paint because they are easy to water down and they're gonna adhere really nicely. I just paint this on in sections with a synthetic brush. And once I get the entire section done, I take a lint-free cloth and I wipe back a lot of that excess and what's going to be revealed is a beautiful whitewash stain on this wood. I like doing paint washes like this versus using a stain because I think you can control your color better and if you want it a little bit more see-through you're just going to add more paint or wipe more excess off but this worked really well in the two to one ratio. And now comes the artistic and fun part. I am going to use all these would you bend flowers and drape them all over the dresser to make it look like the anthropology enchantment dresser. Would you bend is a really fun product that looks like wood, but when you heat it up, it bends and you can mold it a bunch of different ways. So I'm going to heat these up, add some glue to the bottom of them and form them to my dresser. You can use a heat gun or a hair dryer to gently warm them up and they will bend and curve around your furniture. It's really fun and easy. You just use the heat gun to heat up the would you bend and then look, it just bends and molds in any direction you want it to go. You take a little bit of glue, put this on the back and then adhere it to the furniture and just keep continuing this process and building up your flowers all over the dresser. This is a case where you really have to let your inner perfectionist go. I find it best not to plan this out and just take each flower and see how they fit together. I draped mine in the top corner and then I also did some in the bottom corner and down the leg. Once I got all the molds into place, I took my same paint and dry brushed on here. I love how these have a wood tone underneath them. And so putting the dry brush on top of this made this match my whitewash dresser. Once I was done filling them in with paint, it looks like I really carved these right on here. To seal this up, I'm using a wax that has a bunch of natural waxes in it, including carnauba wax, and it has some orange scent to it too. This wax will give it some nice protection and it will cure up in seven days. Just to remind you, this is the piece of furniture that I started off with and here is what it looks like after I gave it a anthro inspired makeover. This one actually went all the way to Texas to be in a house of a dear friend of mine who is actually a furniture flipper as well. I signed the back for her and I wonder if you can guess who it is down in the comments. Makeover number seven is this very orange coffee table that I got on a great deal at that thrift store that I told you guys that I donate a lot of my furniture to. I loved the shape of this and thought it was really well made, but I wanted to get rid of this orange look. So I took that carbide scraper and got that finish off the top because it was so, so thick. This helped me out a lot and saved on my sanding time and my sandpaper. Once I got the top sanded down smooth, I took some of my pro foam sanding paper that I had and got all the curves on the sides of the table. Before I could stain the top, I took a medium grit sandpaper and just smoothed everything out a little bit more. I decided I'm only going to strip the top and use a paint wash on the top and then use that same paint color on the base to save me some time. So for this wash, I'm using one part paint, one part water because I want it to be a little bit see-through and really see this beautiful parquet inlay come through as I'm staining it. Again, I like to use paint washes or water-based stain instead of oil-based stain. I just find they're easier to work with. I don't like all the fumes and I don't like flammable rags in my workspace. Once I got done paint washing the top, I'm using that same color. It is a green toned taupe 
on the base. So I'm painting this on full strength so I don't have to strip back all this finish on the base. It's gonna give it a cohesive look, but kind of cheat so I don't have to strip the whole thing back. I'm taking that same natural wax that I used on my last makeover and just cleaning up that drawer. And then I'm taking a water-based top coat in a flat sheen and I'm gonna protect the top as well as the rest of the body. I did three coats of my top coat on here to give it some good protection. And then the hardware that was on the drawers, I painted to match the rest of the table for a monochromatic look. Just to remind you, here is what my bargain coffee table looked like, and here it is after its makeover. I love the beautiful subtle finish on here. I think it's going to fit in a lot more homes, and that orange tone is completely gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> this one I was going to donate to the thrift store, but I had a friend who saw it and wanted to have it in their living room, so I donated it to them, and they're really enjoying it. Makeover number eight is going to be a fun one. I'm going to give this desk a faux marble top. This is my daughter's desk. And as you can see, she likes to do art at her desk. Uh, I redid this for her back in 2020. And this definitely needs a freshening up. So I cleaned up all the art mess that she had on here. So now I'm ready to prime this thing. And I spilled my primer everywhere. But luckily, I was able to clean that up with my simple green. So I finally got the primer in my sprayer. It's water based. So it works really well in my sprayer I just thin it out to the can specifications to get a nice smooth finish and I'm gonna put this on the top and on the entire body as well once my primer was dry I taped off the top because I'm gonna be doing a faux marble finish on here with some epoxy later in the video but first I'm gonna use that same red end point paint that I used on my fluted dresser this dresser was ombre pink before and I'm just gonna make this a little bit more sophisticated with this grown-up pink the last time I painted this, I did it by hand and blended everything and the sprayer made this go so much faster and it was really smooth. And since this is a cabinet paint, I do not have to top coat it. So I let this dry for a couple of days and then I came in with some masking tape to protect it because the next thing I'm going to do is add a faux marble top with some tabletop epoxy. So I'm just mixing everything up and adding my pigments. And the first coat that you put on is going to be an all white coat. So you just pour this out and just use spreaders to make it even. And this stuff is a lot of fun to work with. It has a pretty long open time, so you have a lot of time to spread it out and get it exactly how you want. It dries to like a shiny marble-like finish, and it's really easy to just maneuver and manipulate everything around with gloves and spreaders. And if you have any uneven spots or little bubbles, you can just run a low heat gun over the top to get those to spread out and pop. And it's really easy to run the spreader underneath the edges to get all these globs off. I let that dry overnight and then I'm ready to add my second coat that's going to have my marbling in it. So again, I mix up some white as well as some black and gray veining to add in here. I'm going to spread this out and then add my veining in with these little sticks. A little bit goes a long way, so I didn't do a ton of veining because I wanted this to have a really natural look. Once you get your veins set, you just want to smush them in with a gloved hand and then you go back over it with a heat gun to blend and smooth everything out. I let this dry overnight and then I removed all my masking tape to get this finished up. I added the hardware back on and then this was ready to move back into my daughter's room. It went from this complete mess to this beautiful new look with a way more durable top. It actually cleans up really well. She's promised me she's not going to go as art crazy in her room and so far she's held up that promise. I just love this look. It looks so high end and it was a fun DIY. Furniture makeover number nine is going to be a pottery barn inspired makeover. I got this console from a friend for free and thought I could make it look like the Wesley console from Pottery Barn. I started off by cleaning and removing the old hardware and filling those hardware holes because I'm going to give this new hardware and I'm just going to give this whole thing a scuff sand so that my paint's going to adhere nicely. When your furniture is really shiny, a scuff sand is always a good idea. Since I'm going from such a dark to a light color, I'm going to use a primer before I add my paint because this is going to help with my coverage. Primer is also great insurance to make sure that you're not going to have any bleed through when you're using a white color. While my primer was drying, I cut down some trim to size to match the trim that's on the Pottery Barn inspired console. This is pine lattice and it already comes primed, so it was ready to paint after I cut it. I'm using an off-white colored all-in-one paint, so this is going to be a top coat and color all-in-one. I sprayed all the trim pieces as well as the entire console table. 
you can see there's a little bit of difference between what I'm spraying and the bright white primer. All these paints and the colors that I'm using are going to be linked down in the description box under each project. After my paint was dry, I was ready to add my caning and my trim to my drawers. I soaked the cane in some water to soften it up and then I cut it down to size to fit on the drawers. I watered down some wood glue and used a brush to apply that to the back of the cane and then I put that on top of the drawer fronts and used some tiles to weight it down. I let that dry completely and it took a long time with the wet cane and the glue to dry so you might want to let this set overnight. Once everything was dry I took my trimmed pieces that were cut to size and attached them with some brad nails and glue. This left me with some nail holes and so I mixed up some white wood filler with a little bit of my paint that I used on the console and lightly dabbed that in all the holes. Once that was dry, I took a damp cloth and wiped back any excess. This saved me from having to sand and touch up with any paint. The last step on my console was adding new hardware, so I drilled a hardware hole in the center of each drawer and added my new gold hardware. I love the challenge of doing these inspired looks, so I took this boring brown console and made it look like something out of the Pottery Barn catalog. I love this one so much I actually have it placed and styled in my front foyer and it's going to stay there for a while. And I think it looks pretty close to this Pottery Barn one. What do you think? We are ready for our final 10th makeover, and this is going to be an easy sofa table makeover. If you have been overwhelmed by all the tools and things I've been using in my furniture makeovers, this one is for you because it is so easy. I removed that old dated hardware and gave this a good cleaning with Simple Green, and that is all I have to do to prep this piece because I am using Beyond Paint. This paint is formulated to stick to almost anything, and it's really easy to put on with just a roller. It is very thick, so it is textured, but it dries down to a smooth textured finish, if that makes sense. You use a chip brush like this to get into any nooks and crannies, and then you're just gonna roll it out with your roller so it goes on so easy, just like this. You let it dry for four hours, and then here I'm adding my second coat. It primes, adds color, and seals all in one step. It is the easiest DIY paint for someone who's never tackled a furniture flip before. And to make this furniture flip even easier, we are going to update this odd shaped hardware without having to fill these holes or drill new ones. And I found this adjustable hardware that you can set at one and three eighths inch all the way to four inches, all without having to drill new holes. This one day makeover went super fast and this sofa table is going in my living room to try to help me from stopping my children jumping over my sofa. So far it's working and I love the dimension that it's added to this room. I hope you guys enjoyed those furniture flips. I hope it inspires you to make over a piece of furniture in your home this year. I'll be back with new makeovers, uh, new DIYs, and a bunch of lifestyle stuff coming at you in 2024. So make sure you subscribe and I will see you in my next video.